Hey guys, it's Anne. This is our first in a whole series. I'm really excited and uh, it's going to be a series where I talk to local business owners and some of them will be my clients and some of them will be my networking friends and some of them will just be plain old friends who own businesses. So today we start with that category actually. Uh, started as a networking friend, but I think it's become more than that. So Karima Davis is here from my tutor partners. Hi Karima. Hi Anne. Thanks so, for having me. Yeah, I'm so glad. I was really excited and it was good timing because here in Maryland, our kids all started back to school today. Um, and Zane is actually, I will tell you this story, you will appreciate this. Zane is done, by the way, he got almost all A's this semester. Wow. His, his B was a very close, you know, to A. And that's a huge difference because you know he's had, a, he's really struggled with school. Um, but I thought I was on top of all this stuff. I got him sat down on the table this morning and I said, okay, your classes are going to start. And then I went back and read the principal's note and I was like, oh, they're not live. <laughs> <laughs> so I had visions of them doing something like this where they're talking. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway, so Karima, tell everybody a little bit about your business. Yeah. So um, basically I work with families of um, mostly primarily middle school and high schoolers um, who are struggling with school or maybe even high achievers. Um, but basically the focus is on um, helping students build confidence and achieve their highest potential and find the right balance between academics and their mental well-being. So um, we work with students through tutoring, test, test prep, and now um, we are now offering parent coaching for parents to help them get a better idea as to how they can support their students at home. And that was something you started offering even before this happened, right? That you, because you because you saw this, I saw it happen. Actually, I saw you watch what was happening here in Savannah Park, and saw the stress that these kids were going under, and realized, wait a second, there's something in the parenting as well that can uh -huh. be helped. So I, I love that you did that. I really Absolutely. appreciate that. Yeah. Absolutely. So uh, before we really get into some of our tips that we do, actually, let me say this too because I don't think you said it. So she does virtual tutoring, uh, which, and she did virtual tutoring before this started. So okay. that's how she helped Zane. She did virtual tutoring with him. He had this nice little pad. What's that called? The little um, it was just a writing, a digital writing pad that it and, connects to his laptop or his computer. Yeah. And then he could do the problems on there and she could see it. So it was virtual tutoring, which is really cool that you do that. Um, and, and we loved it. We thought it was great. Plus, here's the thing that I thought was great personally is I didn't have to drive them one more place. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And, and kids are already on YouTube learning all the time. So they're used to this medium. So yeah, it's really exactly. great. Yeah. All right. So let me before we go on. What we are looking at is this is going to be probably about a 30 minute conversation. If you're not going to be able to stay tuned, um, you've got something that's free and it's you said five smart tips. Do you want to tell them a little bit about that? Sure. Yeah, I've put together five smart tips for parents and students to really help you um, succeed with virtual learning. Virtual learning is something that's new for many, especially now. Like you said, Anne, we've been doing this for a long time, uh, but a lot of people don't really know about it and they're afraid and they're worried that their kids won't be able to stay on track as they normally would in school. But there are ways to do it. There's so many tips that I have to share. So I've put together, it says five, but um, in a little 10 minute, 10 minute audio, you're going to get some really cool tips to help you um, just get your child on track and make sure that they're ready to go and you have a smooth ride through your uh, virtual learning journey. So that's it. So okay. you can go to this link that Anne has up on the screen now and uh, click it. You're going to be able to go and, and just download this uh, tips, the five tips. Awesome. I want to switch gears a little bit too, if you don't mind, because one of the things that we're doing, we're doing this on my social media page. We're doing it there uh, and social media and marketing, but we're doing it there because I also want business owners to see how, you know, kind of learn some tips. How can you build your business during this time? And, and you started this. This is a landing page you created. Yep. And it will help you what? what? What will it help you? How will it help you? So for me as a business owner, I get to share uh, valuable resources, content for my my, uh, you know, for parents and for students out there. And for me, it helps me to um, 
get to know more people. Uh, you know, when you sign up for it, I get to know who you are and you're going to learn some valuable things from me. Hopefully we'll build a relationship. Um, we'll get to know each other a little bit better. Um, and that's that's a, that's what this is all about. We're connecting through online marketing, online resources that are available for everyone to use. And every business can do this. It's a way to also, um, you know, grow your business. Right. And it's scary. I think people think it's really, oh, it's going to be so hard, but it, it's not as hard as they think. No, it's really, you know, what's that thing we say where you, how do you eat an elephant, right? Mm -hmm. eat an elephant one bite at a time. Just look it up and start. You'll get, you'll be okay. And you know, you can do online things. There are some things you can do. So, all right. So I want to start with how to stay focused and engaged during virtual learning. Yes. So <laughs> this is one um, that I could talk about for days, but <laughs> to keep it short, um, I guess we have students out there who are taking live classes from their teachers here and there. It depends on where you are, which county, if you're in Maryland, which state you're in, if you're somewhere else outside of Maryland. Some, some counties or some school districts are offering live classes. And some are offering just, um, I guess, resources or curriculum for the students to follow. And then I'm assuming that they are emailing their teachers or corresponding some way after their work is submitted, if they have questions, that kind of thing. So let's take the first uh, scenario. So imagine that you are having live classes. If you're having live classes, it's really important for you to take advantage of that time as a student. So you want to make sure that your child is getting onto the class on time, getting logged in early so that if they have any technical issues, they're not going to get stuck, you know, right. and not even make it into class 10, 15 minutes later and miss half of what, what you know, what they could have learned. Um, and when they get in there, you want them to be engaged. So we're using... Uh, software, virtual software right now that allows us to communicate. It will be very similar in a virtual classroom, except they'll have probably a, tons of other um, tools that they can use to, for learning. So they're going to they're going to have a chat box. They're going to have, you know, microphone, uh, video, possibly video uh, access and features. So you want your student to um, pay attention to the to the teacher, stay engaged by using the chat. If she's asking questions, responding, you know, <laughs> in the chat, um, not just sitting there being shy. Um, also, um, we have in Zoom, of course, a feature where you can raise your hand. If you have a question, raise your hand, you know, tell your student to raise their hand. Um, if there is an assignment that you need to do, they need to do um, in the classroom within the class time, make sure they're you know, getting that assignment done, make sure they're, um, you know, maybe they might go into a breakout room and they have to work with other, other classmates. Make sure they're getting those things done. That is valuable learning time that they're not going to get once they leave that virtual classroom. Right. And most well, it's funny that you said you're talking about all of this because one thing I thought he sat down at the computer this morning and this was before I knew it wasn't live, but he sat down at the computer and, and by, you know, with the computer and that was it. And I was like, don't you think you should have a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil? Or, and he's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, how about your agenda? Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. So I all think of those things. preparation is huge. Yeah. Preparation is huge. And all those things you just <clears throat> named, and many students think that, oh, I'm learning online. So I just need my laptop or whatever device they're using. No, you need a notebook. You need paper, pencils. Um, you need a calculator, possibly. You know, you want to have these resources handy. You want to have your agenda so you can stay on track. And if you, if something comes up, you see an assignment that's going to be do you know sometime soon you want to go ahead and write that down and keep you know keep on top of all of your things in the same way you would if you were in your brick and mortar classroom right right yeah so um i'll tell a little story here and, and i don't think he minds because we talked about it friday um ethan mm -hmm. my middle son is in college and he's doing virtual classes and it's really difficult he hates them uh, but his freshman year of college he took a virtual class and I think he felt it. I'm, I'm pretty sure if he didn't feel it, he came very close to feeling it. And it was because he kept coming up with these excuses. I can't, I can't get on. The teacher's not doing this. I don't have that. Mm -hmm. I don't. And what it really was is that he wasn't accountable. So <clears throat> how can we help hold them accountable? And what 
should we make them accountable for? You know, how, you know, because we don't want to completely micromanage this. Yeah. Especially, especially middle school and high school. We don't want to micromanage it because they're not, we're not going to micromanage it next year. Not at right? all. Yeah, <clears throat> exactly. So uh, yeah. And that's a very good point that you made. So when I'm saying make sure that they're doing these things, of course, you want to communicate this, these, all of these tips that I'm giving right now, communicate those things to them initially because they're just starting off with something new, right? But once they know, and you know, you might want to have, like I said, download that, um, the, the resource that I mentioned earlier, that's going to have um, an audio and a slideshow that you can use, you can print it, you know, um, but once you give them that information, it's up to them to use it, right? And then it's right. up to you, of course, to follow up and, you know, to make sure they are, but not don't micromanage, right? Because right. you're like exactly what you said, you won't be doing that once they go to college. So right. um, the thing is, in terms of accountability, I... I think that there are so many ways that they can hold themselves accountable. So one thing I want to say is that students always collaborate with their peers, with their classmates to, to make sure they're getting their work done. Right. They right. check in with each other to see like, OK, what's due tomorrow or next week or what are we doing here and there? So they can do the same thing with virtual learning. It's no different. Hold each other accountable. So I would encourage them to you know, the same way they would before, check in with their peers, get someone, one or two friends or classmates to be an accountability buddy, you know, to make sure they're getting everything done that's and they can idea. hold each other accountable. Um, that's one way. Um, another way would be um, making sure that, you know, they are setting up their space setting themselves up for success. So what I mean by that is that we talked about staying focused. Being accountable also means, you know, of course, like we said earlier, getting to class on time. But when you're in class, making sure that you shut off your social media, that you shut off the other tabs, right? Um, right. All on your computer. Don't have 20 tabs up that might distract you. So these are all the things that they can, you know, they can do as well. And when I say monitor your social media usage, I mean, you know, middle schoolers and high schooler schoolers, they're on this like TikTok and Snapchat and Instagram and everything exactly. all throughout the day when they're at home, it's going to be a lot easier for them to be distracted by those things. So there are apps out there to help you monitor your time to make sure you're staying productive. I think that's another great way to just hold themselves accountable. And, um, you know, it's just a matter of making sure that they are setting themselves up again for success. Right. Not I, looking I for just, us to do it. I just had an aha moment where you're sitting here and I'm looking over at Zane and I'm wondering if he has his phone over there because <laughs> it didn't occur to me that he's not allowed to have his phone in his classroom. So he might could be sitting over there. I'll have to look when I'm done. But yeah, maybe that's the rule. You know, don't have your phone. Your phone has to be in the kitchen if you're in the dining room, right? And that was the other thing is we did say, Ethan Ethan called me and said, you know, make sure he's not doing it in his room. Make sure he's not doing it at the kitchen counter. These, is, these are places where he normally is on his phone or he's uh -huh. doing other things. So make sure it's a place that is dedicated to just school. Yeah, And exactly. I thought that was a really good tip. I thought Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So, all right. So tell me, I, you talk about help seeking skills a lot. As a matter of fact, I know uh, for Burgers and Bands, you did a talk for us on help seeking skills. So uh, I'd love you to tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah. So I think I think that there are some basic ways that students can, you know, utilize, just advocate for themselves or seek help when they need it. So um, a few things I would recommend is. Um, for one, if they are not having live classes, especially if they're not having live classes, uh -huh. they need to be comfortable with reaching out to their teacher if they need support. I can imagine that teachers are going to have office hours where yes. students can pop in or, you know, send an email or however they're going to communicate, send a message and, you know, let the teacher know that they need help and don't wait until the last minute. Um, right. You need this is a virtual, you know, with this whole virtual learning piece, it's more about they're going to be more responsible. They need to be more responsible, more independent about their learning. 
um, more than they would if they were in school, I think, because right. oh, there's yeah. so much, there's so much room for just for them to just be relaxed and comfortable. Right. Right. So they need, and the, the teacher is not right there with them. They're not, you know, right. They're not in the same building where they can just go and, you know, get help when they need it. So they need to, for, for one, consider the time, consider the fact that if there is an issue, always go and ask for help right away. Right. Um, but, you know, given c- considering the fact that your teachers, the teachers are also, you know, fighting to like keep everything running and, you know, managing all these different classes offline or, you know, online, but not in the classroom. Yeah, not in the classroom. So that's a challenge for them as well. So, you know, there are a lot, lots of resources online where students can go check out YouTube videos, um, just find resources. And I have another, a list also um, that I can share of resources for students to use, um, you know, for online educational websites and all sorts of things. That'd be great. If you could share that in the comments, that would be awesome. Yeah, I'll so, definitely do that. Yeah. Or actually, if you, you know, while we're talking, if you end up putting it up in, in the little chat thing, I didn't know we had, yeah. I can put it up for the <laughs> Yeah, I can try to put that up at the end. Yeah. So um, definitely. Um, yeah, for sure. So I, I want to share a story about, you know, we, we've talked about this before. All our children are very different, right? Uh-huh. And my oldest child always did really well in school. Um, but I learned something from him and when, he went, <clears throat> when he went to college that I was like, oh, my God, I wish I'd known that when I was in college. He, even though he, you know, got brilliant grades all the way through, he went Every time there were office hours for a professor, he was there. Uh And I actually thought, God, I wonder if he's driving them nuts. So I talked to my sister-in-law who's a professor. She says, no, those are my favorite students, my ones who come for office hours. Uh So we told all our midshipmen that. And every one of them that has done well has used that same skill. So it's kind of nice for the children to have this right now where they're having to use these virtual office hours. But it's nice for them to learn the skill before they get to college because then they get there and they're like, oh, I know office hours. I get this. It is. It's very, I think virtual learning, it allows more opportunity for one-to-one time. That is one advantage of it. It may not seem like it at first in the classroom if they're having live classes, but there is that that office, the office hours are there. There's that time where they can have that um, time with the teacher alone to get that one-on-one attention. And they might be more inclined to do it since they can't actually see them in the classroom. Right. So absolutely office hours are super important and um also just you know using whatever resources are available the teachers always upload things on on the you know within whatever platform they're using for that school system um use those resources you know right. check in check in with your friends who may even you know be have more clarity on whatever the question is that you have um that's a really good skill to develop as you know peers your with the with your peers in terms of um allowing your peers opportunities too to have that um you know peer tutoring kind of you know uh experience right so, exactly yeah exactly. and you have some students who enjoy doing that and then there are of course some who don't but you know you know who those people are um <laughs> yeah i have and, one of those <laughs> yeah <laughs> So. And then, of course, you know, if you um, if that doesn't work, we're here where we love helping students. So um, at any time, if you feel that it's just too overwhelming, um, we are here to help students. You know, that's get a good where they point need to be. because they can if they have these and the teachers, you know, they're yeah, some some teachers, honestly, they just aren't getting along. The kid is not getting along with that particular teacher. So that's a mm-hmm. really great time to say, you know what? I got the work. I know what's going to happen. Let me call Karima or somebody on Karima's team and work with them to get my get my child through this. I think that's a really good point. Yeah, um, absolutely. So, while we're doing this, just so you guys know, we can see comments. I can see them coming in. So please do leave comments, ask questions. You've got Karima here. She has been doing this for a long time and in so many cool ways. And and Karima, you do every. You've got somebody who teaches almost every subject or every subject probably. Yeah. And let me just mention one other thing. And a lot of people don't know this, but I've just started sharing this a lot more recently. I started with virtual or online learning back about 16 years ago when my daughter, who's now almost 22, was in kindergarten. So 
she did online school starting from kindergarten and then through second grade. And then, you know, we did a lot of homeschooling offline in between. Then for four years, we did online school again. So I'm very uh, familiar with this, not just as a teacher, but also as a mom, as a parent, um, you know, homeschooling my own kids through online schools. Right. So, you know, and, and you're actually doing this. So this is a good question for you. You're doing this right now. Your, your kids are learning at home. Mm -hmm. You are at home trying to run a business mm -hmm. and trying to be a mom. Being a mom is a lot of work. You know, I was just thinking, oh my God, I've got to go in. I've got to empty that dishwasher. I haven't done that yet. And I've got to do, <laughs> and meanwhile, I'm trying to take care of my clients and trying to do this. So what is your best tip for not losing your mind during this and also not losing your temper? Oh, yeah. So I'm glad you asked that question. One thing I want to say to parents, especially now, is to please be compassionate. I know you are just, you know, I'm sure you're lovely parents, but your kids really need it right now. They're right. super duper stressed and overwhelmed with everything that's going on in the world right now. And this is just something new for them that's on top of it all. They can't go to school. They can't see their friends. Everyone's social distancing. We are just, you know, well, we have our scared because, you know, you if you look at pandemics on, in movies, they're scary. Your insides are melting and the world, you know what I mean? It's like the worst thing you can imagine. Everybody's dying of this thing. Yeah. And that's not the case in this case, but it's still their kids. So that's where their imaginations are going. Exactly. There are a lot of them have seen these movies, especially if they're in high school and they are stressed out. I, I, I have that. I've seen it firsthand, you know, and even in my own kids, they're stressed out about this thing. Right. So, I mean, luckily, my kids were already homeschooled. But for kids who are now having to be homeschooled or not homeschooled, but, you know, have this virtual learning opportunity experience, rather. Um, this Actually, is, I think opportunity is a good thing. I like that. It's it a, is an opportunity. It's an opportunity. Yeah. It is. It's an opportunity because they're going to need this um, skill later on for sure. Right. Um, but yeah, these kids are really stressed. So don't I want to tell parents, don't get super don't get so stressed and like so, um, you know, strict with your kids about making sure everything gets done. Give them time to adjust. Give them time to figure it all out. Find a way that works for them. Find a schedule that works for them. They are not going to be able to just go in and do this like eight to three as they normally would in school. Right. They and they're not going to need to because they also no. don't have the other kids who are distracting the teacher. They don't have all of that. So it's exactly right. Exactly. Actually, we have a question. I'm going to put it up on the screen so you can see it. Um, Lauren Gerlach, she, they, by the way, Lauren is the owner of Challenger Auto, um, down here in Pasadena. And we're going to probably interview her soon too, her, because she's, um, she's phenomenal as well. But she says, do, do you have teachers certified in dyslexia? So that's a great question. We do not currently have teachers certified in dyslexia. Um, however, we've worked with students who have dyslexia, um, who've had dyslexia, who still have dyslexia. Um, so very familiar with it. I mean, I've worked personally myself with students with dyslexia for several years. So very yeah. familiar with it. But no, to answer your question, not certified. Okay, thank you. Uh, and uh, Lauren, thank you for watching. We really appreciate everybody who's watching. And if you can share this and, and really it tag Karima tag, uh, it's my tutor partners, right? Tutor it's, partners. Tutor, tutor partners. Okay. Yeah. So tag tutor partners when you do this so that she gets some people coming over to her. Uh, maybe share that first link. We'll go back to that in a minute so we can tell you about that. But I also wanted to talk about something that happened yesterday with Zane. Um, oh. You know, he loves music. Uh -huh. And this is his thing. So yesterday he's like, oh, no, school is back and I can't practice all day. So he's made this schedule and it is a very tight. These are the times I have to be in class and these are the times I'm studying because, he's, you know, he does voice lessons and uh, guitar lessons and uh -huh. um, drum lessons. And and he's put these in there every day. And so I realized it's going to be 70 degrees today and sunny. And I said, oh, we should go for a walk. And he says, no, that's not on my schedule. And I was like, no, 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 that's self-care. Uh -huh. And that's something we should do. So yes. tell me tell me why self-care is important and, and how you would suggest scheduling this or would you schedule it? 
Yeah, I'm so happy that you brought this up because I have, you know, there are kids who are schedulers, right? I have one at home. My 17 year old Amira, she is a scheduler. And my oldest daughter, Samia, she's also a scheduler. And if they don't have a schedule, they feel like overwhelmed by not having a schedule. Right. Whereas there are some people who need who don't want a schedule because schedules, too many tight schedules, like really drive them crazy. Right. Um, so scheduling self-care, that is something that even if you don't love schedules, you should schedule it in. Because why? This is going to um, demand a lot of your energy being this is, again, for kids who are having classes virtually. If you're not having classes virtually, it's a lot more flexible. So Zane is going to have it super is that he's going to have a lighter, you know, um, a, a lighter load in terms of his, you know, getting his schoolwork done during the daytime because he doesn't have to have those live classes. Right. But you need he he has so many other things that demand his time because he loves his music right right and he's i mean i kind of feel bad because i did like teach him about the scheduling thing <laughs> <laughs> no, well, i appreciate that no no i think it's but, good, but, I, but i also think that it's you know again yeah but even us as adults even yeah. and, and i keep saying that to moms Schedule your time where you say to the kids, I'm going to my room now. Or for yes. me, I love television. Yes. I'm going to go sit down and watch ER now. And I will always yep. say, I've got a 45-minute show. I'm going to watch ER. This is my quiet time. Unless you need me, please let me have this. Mm -hmm. Right? And I think yep. there, there are things that you need to, you need to schedule it for yourself as well. You do. You do. And especially, you know, with them working at home and not getting out to go to their school, Things like going for a walk, getting up, going outside to do something, right? The weather is going to be beautiful soon. Today, is, it'll be beautiful, right? Right. Get up, get out, do something. And even, you know, every few minutes, stand up and stretch. Don't sit for hours straight, just doing schoolwork, glued, glued to the screen, because um, that's so easy to fall into. And right. if you have these high achievers who um, want to get it all done, it's going to really drain them by the end of the week, you know, by the end of this month, it, it will really drain them. So they right. have to take those breaks, have a really good morning and bedtime routine as they normally would if they were going to school. It's so easy to just fall into like staying up late, sleeping in, you know, if you don't have classes to attend. So sticking to your normal schedule is going to really help you, you know, just to make your day go smooth, more smoothly to help you think better. Right. You need your sleep. Right. Right. So exactly. all of these things are really important for them to do. Right. Right. Now, I, 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 you know, you when I just said to you, what are the things we should talk about? And I was so happy to see that you put self-care on there because I do think it's so important. And again, not just for the kids, but also for the parents. I think absolutely we're stuck here. And um, it's so easy. It's so easy to get yourself stuck into Amory. Um, Oh, Tolman, I think is her last name. Uh -huh. She talked this morning about the fact that many of us are already in this new environment that we're living in going, I don't have enough time. Uh -huh. And we need to stop saying I don't have enough time because we have to put those times in there. I have enough time to do my meditation in the morning. Yes. I yeah. have enough time to go on my walk. Uh -huh. <laughs> so sorry. I just have to schedule it out. By the yep. way. Spring has definitely sprung. I yes. am sneezing my eyes. I put on makeup this morning, but I'm sure I'll have two black <laughs> eyes by the end of the day from rubbing them from the, the pollen. I know, so, me too. I know. Yeah, but you know crazy. what? And another thing I wanted to say is you're so right about parents, especially if you have younger students, younger <laughs> children who are um, who are more who are more, in more need of your help. Right. Right. So they're going to be coming to you. They don't have the teacher there. They're going to need you to, you know, help them. But at the same time, you have to take that mommy and daddy time to just like take care of yourself and not you can't give anything to them if you've used all of what you have. Right. Exactly. At the end of the day. Exactly. So you definitely have to take those breaks, take time out for yourself. And, you know, do the things that you love and, and don't feel like you don't have the time. Like you just said, it's, you have it. Just got to schedule it in. Right. Right. Exactly. So. All right. So I've put that I, I've had the far, five smart tips back up here for you guys to look at. Um, that is a great place. Well, if they click there, are they going to also be able to click through to your website? 
No. So, so if they click there, that will not take them to my website. My website is mytutorpartners.com. So um, definitely visit our website. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to schedule a time for us to talk. Um, there's a link on my website for um, to schedule a free assessment call. Um, I'm happy to give advice to parents who need it right now. I know it's a you know we're in a really trying time, and people right. are, there are going to be some people who are really you know taking this. It's going to be hard for them, right? So. It's well, and I think it, I I hope that people are seeing that they're ebbing and flowing. There are moments when I am completely stressed out, and I think, "Oh my God, this is never going to end, and this is the worst time." And then I'm mm -hmm. like, you know, I'm so grateful for this moment right now, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, and, and so I'm ebbing and flowing, and if we can see that, I think that will be helpful. Um, yeah, absolutely. Karima, thank you for coming on. I want to talk about what we're doing tomorrow, and and we're and I, each day we're doing something this week, but I want to talk a little bit about what we're doing each day. Tomorrow we have Chrissy Searlock. Do you, have you met her yet? I'm she's a leading sure. lady as well. And I think oh, she, she's an ambassador, a leading lady ambassador. She's from Pongo's Learning Lab. Oh, yes. Yeah. She's lovely. Yes. Um, but one of the reasons I'm having her come on, she will probably talk some about this learning as well. But mostly she's going to talk about taking your business online. And I awesome. don't know how much time you've spent with her, but she's phenomenal because she I always feel like I do things very, very fast. Uh -huh. She is faster than I am by far. She's like on top of this. Let's get business sales online. Let's help you get your business going. Awesome. And she has just taken this whole big business. I think she has like, I, I think she has 10,000 square feet of space and she's had to close it. But wow. she's still doing things. She's still doing amazing things. So I'm excited about having her on tomorrow. That's oh, awesome. I think we have one more comment. Let's see who it is. Okay. Uh, um, actually, yes. So uh, Helen Fitzgerald, who's also a leading lady, said she loves this as a retired. Let me, I'll put it up there so you can see it. Love this as a retired teacher. She's a retired teacher. So she's been she's been watching this and seeing what everybody's doing. And I, I think it's exciting. Awesome. Um, and hopefully I'll see both of you, Helen and, and uh, Karima, on Wednesday morning at 8 for our uh, civic dinner. That will be for awesome. Breakfast. And again, <laughs> I was trying to share this um, list of resources. It's a file. I don't know if I can upload files here, but okay. I'll tell you what. I'll share it on my uh, Facebook page. So come and come to uh, Tutor Partners Facebook page, and I'll share it there. And that way, you can always download it. And that would be great. It. That okay? would be great. Thank you so much, Karima. And you guys, thank you for tuning in. Talk to you later. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye, Ann. Bye.